goodness with face, pat, and tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. A show with three friends, separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, I'm one third of the partners. It's your boy, Tiz, and I'm along with. The other third of the partners, tired as fuck. <laughs> it's the Padawan. I don't got nothing fancy else to say because I'm too tired. I got the second vax. And I'm along with. <laughs> Exactly, man. It's your best place in the place. Um, I took a time out from the race, but hey, I can jump back in whenever I want to. What's happening? What's happening is um, <laughs> this has been a fuck of a week. Um, we're gonna get right off into the mental health check in because, uh, yeah, um, so short week. Already three deaths in. Um, oh. My son's godmother's father has passed. Oh, man. Um, uh, a young person that uh, I kind of mentored just passed. And, um, like, my wife actually taught his older sister and everything. Um, but man. just passed. And then... Um, my wife's brother's brother passed. So for me, as a person who is heavily triggered, um, it's been a lot of shock. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, talking about something else other than negative shit. Cause uh, mm -hmm. I go to work tomorrow. Um, so that already has me very much so on uh, kind of pins and needles. Um, yeah, heart been on 15,000 all day, um, past couple of days. Meds are definitely helping more than hurting, but you know, it's still not like where you don't feel anything, you still feel super anxious. It's just not. It hasn't, it's only led to two times since I got the new meds that I've had to take like the hydrazine or whatever the fuck it's called. The shit that act fast that keep me from oh. having a panic attack. So that's cool, but really scared about tomorrow going back to work. Uh, gonna be the most triggers at once that I've had to face. Um, oh. Like I've been kind of doing some immersion therapy over the past week. Um, Use my mom and them coming as an excuse and uh, used Halloween as an excuse to kind of get out and get around people and unmask folks. Uh, and um, kind of deal with that. Like a lot of people moving around that I can't control at one time. Uh -huh. But the amount of negativity that can sometimes be in my workplace definitely compounds everything else so um sure. we're gonna see tomorrow gonna be a day but we're gonna push through that shit and see what happens and if <sighs> i can't push through then i'm gonna get my ass home and try again the next day um i'm pretty much at a day-by-day -day thing with it now i got my fmla paperwork um that's pretty much uh like i was trying to just say i'm gonna go back but she was like no nah, i'm gonna put it as recurring because you can't control whether or not you can't predict you having like a severe panic episode and you not being able to function at them. Like it just is what it is. So you need to have the flexibility. Like if you're fucked up, you need to be able to like take time or take that with right. hours or whatever it is. So, um, yeah, that's where we are with it this week. Um, I ain't gonna front. I may actually need y'all this week, uh, especially going back tomorrow. Uh, so, 
I text ring or ring your phone midday, even if you can't answer right there, just try to hit me back. Or may just need to talk or just have somebody sensible talking down, or the wife may not be available or whatever it may be. But yeah. Just look out for your boy this week. Um for you, for you. That's all I can think of right now. So if one of y'all want to check in and you know, how you doing? What's going on with you this weekend? How can we be there? I'll go ahead and take it. Well, this week's been an okay week. I haven't had too many mental struggles. Um, I haven't had to face too many triggers and I stayed away from all angry aspects. Anything's going to make me mad or throw me that way. Um, I had one incident. I can say I had one incident last night that I'm very proud of myself about because I could have got angry very fast. Like, instantaneously, but I was able to grab myself in the moment, like quicker than I ever have, and just think about what was going on and realize it was me getting mad that was gonna make the situation worse. So I'm proud of myself in that aspect. So I see that the transition in my anger, I'm getting a lot better with that. So I am proud of that. But right. um no like I said, no real mental struggles this week. Um, haven't really had no real ups and downs, so I'm pretty Gucci on that aspect. Um, as usual, just be there if I need to talk. That's what y'all can do for me, and um, I'm gonna push it on the pack. Well, you know we got you on that, big bro. So damn sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a bit hazy <sighs> right now. <laughs> hey, this Zach's kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, hey. Yeah, hazy. Um, well, I did smoke earlier, but this this vax really have like had me slowed up, like pretty much. It so. will get you drowsy. Yeah, so I'm trying to like I'm all, I'm riding on fumes a little bit, but I'm up pretty much. But I'm good. Um You sound like you are on that gas from the dentist. I feel like it. <laughs> you said, oh, oh that's gonna be a loopy e uh loopy evening here for episode 50. <laughs> oh god yeah you probably gonna joke me about a lot of stuff that i say because oh god. good i get some laughs yeah. i need them so now, if no if no other night but tonight i need a few chuckles laughs just good conversation with the bros man I, i'm actually really excited to just pull up with y'all and talk this week uh about whatever the topics end up being, but I'm definitely excited. Um, how can we be there for you, Pat, especially as you're going through this uh, loopy time, but just in general, how are you outside of the vaccine? How can we be there for you, bro? Um, just know my reaction time is a little bit slower than normal probably this week. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I, I'm going to try to be there, plus I'm going to manage work, but yeah, just, just know it's, it's no offense. I just I'm trying to manage myself right now because this thing has, I don't, I don't know, man. It's like the first bags, it was cool. I really didn't, you know, I was like sleepy for the moment, but this one, man, this was my arm feel like it's a robot arm. It's heavy as hell. Oh, they it's put the crazy. chip in you this one. I got you. Mm, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm just waiting for half my face to turn metallic. I hope my eyes can shoot lasers, but you know, that'll be a plus. Okay, Kano. Yeah. That'll that work. Dope. That'll work. Yeah. Uh I, I wouldn't mind having a friend that's a Mortal Kombat character. That'll be definitely a new dynamic to things in our uh friendship. Uh you're it'll definitely open, gonna be working security for the crew from now on. Uh, oh yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, and we're gonna find a way to use that laser for some good too. Y'all need to download. They they need to make me a DLC character for fighting games and like Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> Round one, fight! Oh, good and fuckery, good and fuckery. <laughs> you be throwing your dreads at people. <laughs> And then you kick them with the 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 foot of fuckery. Fatal fuckery. You joking on my man bag? Yeah, pull out. No! 
<laughs> oh my God, if you pull the man bag out the clutch, bruh, and hit him with a combo, like E Honda's 100 hand slap, but like a 100 bag slap, like KO. Not the 100 bag slap. I feel like I'm on the. The Merce Mauler. You said what, Face? I got something for the good and fuckery for the good part later. Ooh. Oh, good. Well, we like good. Oh, I got some fuckery for the fuckery part. But I well, used that to be all some... good for the night. How you doing, <laughs> though, good. Pat? What do we need to do for you this week, man? Uh, other than just knowing your reaction time is slow. We can see that. <laughs> Ain't no wrong. Same, same as usual, man. Just I, That's all I ask is understanding. Right now, what this. I need from you is understanding. <laughs> 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 All right, man. Uh, let's get off into it while I'm laughing, man. Uh, already hanging with the bros has got to uh, be feeling more positive than I was before I came in. So let's get off into some more positivity with the positive black news. The cool shit. Yes, the cool black shit that black people are doing, experiencing, creating, uh, making, experiencing all of the cool stuff that we are going through in the world today. And we got a few stories for y'all. The first story is coming to you from foxcarolina.com. And this is the first black woman graduate of MUSC's College of Medicine retired. So after almost 50 years of work, Dr. Rose Dolores Gibbs of Monk's Corner is hanging up her stethoscope. People know Monk's Corner. That's uh, South Carolina down there where um, Charlemagne the God is from. And Dr. Gibbs is the first African-American woman to graduate from the Medical University of South Carolina with a medical degree, according to MUSC. And now she is sharing her inspiring journey. In her class, there were only three African-American students. There were two men and herself, Dr. Gibbs said. Dr. Gibbs said she knew that she wanted to be a doctor at a young age, around six or seven, when she was hanging on the monkey bars and fell. She had to go to the doctor, but the physician noticed something else. The discovery of the heart murmur kind of led me to clinics at the MUSC. And I was just in awe of the students and the doctor, said Dr. Gibbs. So she's now retiring. She's hanging up a stethoscope. She's putting up her lab jacket and she uh, is ending her own private practice. Um, She's done mission work in Sierra Leone, West Africa with the Peace Corps. She did a residency at Howard University. But uh, yeah, man, she's a queen. She is definitely uh, doing big things in this world of medicine. And she is the first African-American woman to graduate from that school. So just... Huge legend in the game. So salute to Dr. Gibbs, Dr. Rose Dolores Gibbs of Monk's Corner. Salute to the queen on her retirement and salute to her for blazing trails at the Medical University of South Carolina and in medicine in general. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And now next up, um, a formerly incarcerated brother, Jason Soule is now a criminal justice professor at a, prof- at a prestigious university. Jason Soule, who was formerly incarcerated on drug charges, is now a professor teaching criminal justice, justice at Hamline University in St. Paul, Minnesota. After all that he's gone through, he said he believes that there can be a world without police. Soule, a native of Chicago, grew up during the 90s war on drugs. He was doing good at school, but he got involved in gangs when he was a teen. In fact, at the young age of 19, he was arrested and sent to jail after he was caught carrying a gun in Minnesota. Since then, he's been getting in and out of jail on drug charges. At that time, he was also studying in college. He eventually decided to get his PhD in criminal justice. In the past 12 years, Sol has been a criminal justice educator. He is currently an adjunct professor at Hamline University, where he helps his students prepare, prepare for careers in law and law enforcement. I can see a world without police in cages, Soul will tell his students. Moreover, he's making initiatives to show others safer ways 
to hold people accountable when they harm others. So, um, and he also co-founded Humanitize My Hoodie, a movement that aims to fight against the stereotype of black people wearing a hooded sweatshirt through clothing, art exhibitions, documentary screenings, and workshops. So salute to the brother Jason Soul for showing how you can literally turn lemons into lemonade and go from the high end boss to training people and teaching people how to defend and support the criminal justice system that once incarcerated you. So definitely a huge turnaround story. Definitely dope to see somebody that didn't just accept what life threw at them. They decided to say, you know what? Um, yeah, this may be where I start, but it ain't got to be where I end. And, you know, really just make big, big move, man. I, I really salute that brother on that. And yeah, man, salute Jason Soul. Dr. Jason Soul, I should say. And I agree. That's huge. I agree. So we could work on a, a world so without police. We can. I agree. We can work on a world without police and cages. That'd Man, be if we can just Jeez. get some respect. It's all about <laughs> respect. Like, it's, it, people yeah. make it seem like it's really hard, but I, I really think if people train children up into the ways of respect early and continuously preach that, and that becomes the norm, and we model that toward our kids. Like that's a hu huge population of people. If you just look at just the parents, just the parents and their kids that are now operating in a more civil way, like it's civility and respect. So hopefully we can one day yeah. see that day. But in the meantime, salute to brothers like Jason Soul who are out here teaching people how to be better and who has that perspective of both sides of the law that can really shed a, a more uh, robust perspective on things. So salute like to that, that kid. Word. What you said, big bro? I like that word, man. What's that? Robust. Oh yeah, robust, man, robust. As in uh, a more well-rounded or flushed out or full. And, robust. And full and plump. <laughs> um. And from that king who was doing up, big Pat. things in law to Shut this up, queen, meet Shaquina McKenzie, who is at who at 28 years old has become the first black female judge in the city of McComb or Mickham. Not really sure how to pronounce it. McComb or Mickham, Mississippi. Uh, it was a surreal moment because I work hard. I have faith, McKenzie told WJTV. The next thing you know, you start reaping the benefits of things you've invested into. It was definitely a full circle moment for me. Mackenzie, um, she grew up in McComb or Mickham, whatever, whichever one it is. And she's always wanted to become a lawyer to be the change that she wanted to see. So she took a political science with human rights minor at University of Southern Mississippi. Then she moved to Jackson and went to Mississippi College School of Law where she got her law degree and then she graduated cum laude. And at, the, and at that time, she also practiced law part-time. And then from there, um, she's now entered into the world of being a judge and a young judge at that, at 28. You know, judges are usually in their 30s, 40s when they first starting out. So the fact that she's so young is definitely a, a big deal. Um, so salute to that queen, Judge Shaquina McKenzie. Indeed, indeed. Um, and that came to us from blacknews.com. Um, the last story as well came to us from blacknews.com. Um, y'all there? We right here, brother. Oh, okay. We it here. was just it was just dead ass silent. So I just wanted to make sure I won't trip it. You know, I know this positivity oh, no, we, can be overwhelming. Positivity you were spewing, man. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be yeah, rude. I'm trying to make sure a pet ass ain't went to sleep over there, too. I see he got his uh, avatar up, you know, and he feeling loopy. I don't, don't want to throw it to him and uh, the fucker be that he no, fell asleep. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm good, man. I'm, I'm changing. I'm changing shirts. It got hot. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm glad you put your avatar up. All right, uh, for the last story in the positive black news, guys, it's coming to us from BNC.TV. And it is about the spark charge 
building the bridging the gap between black communities and electric vehicles. Spark Charge is on a mission to create the world's first mobile, intelligent, and on-demand electric vehicle charging network. At the end of 2020, the United States saw a little more than 1.3 million electric vehicles on the road. While studies show black and brown communities want to transition to electric cars to reduce noise and pollution, accessibility to charging stations makes it nearly impossible. BNC correspondent Shannon Lanier spoke to Spark Charge CEO Josh Aviv about the company's plans. We believe that mobile charging is the future, Aviv said. We believe that it's more convenient. It's more cost effective. It really tears down a lot of barriers to owning an electric vehicle and it helps communities thrive. So Spark Charge recently launched a subscription service named Currently, which allows electric vehicle owners to select how much range they want, where they want it, and get it delivered with the push of a button. Aviv took his idea and secured $1 million of capital for Mark Cuban and Lori Griner to help get his startup off the ground. And he's been grateful because the road to success hasn't always been easy. So uh, he used the Shark Tank uh, CEOs to look out for him and kind of uh, get him that jump. And um, yeah, man, his machine actually allows you to charge your damn car pretty much anywhere, no matter the neighborhood you're in, which is fucking revolutionary. I, I don't... Um, yeah, so if we can support this brother, Spark Charge, if you can look into it, if you're a person that's in tech or to invest in or anything like that, um, definitely try to support. Or if you have an electric car and you're looking to solve that problem, look into this, man. This is pretty dope. So salute to CEO Josh Aviv of Spark Charge. Spark Charge. Cool stuff. Yeah, my and question. Ask it. My question is about smart cars themselves. Now, Naturally, if I was living in a, how can I say it? Fuck it. If I was living in a fucked up neighborhood, I would be okay. apprehensive about, about buying a smart car and parking my shit on the street. You feel me? Just, just being street smart. You feel me? So I wonder, like, just, just me personally, what's like the stat on theft for electric cars versus regular cars. Are there more thefts or less thefts for electric cars? Because there's less theft for electric cars because a normal motherfucker can't find a way to charge it. I would would be willing to invest more in an electric car because one, it's a deterrent. If it is a deterrent, you feel me? That's one automatic benefit. But I, don't, if they I, get I would have to look that up. But I would, I, I got a theory. Would, I would say I mean, it might not be a deterrent, but I would say the average person with a smart, with a, the average electric car has so many smart features and stuff between alarm systems and non starts, yeah. and you might need a special key for this one. I would assume that the average person that's still in the car, like they, they're going to go for the easiest thing that they can get off. And I would assume yeah. that it's harder to hot wire and all that. So they probably going to say, you know what, if it's a smart car sitting there or an electric car or whatever, and it's like a, a Plymouth or I mean like an Oldsmobile or something, like they probably going to go for the Oldsmobile just because uh -huh. it's, it's more low key. It's more of them on the road for them to blend in. It's like it's easy. Yeah. And most thieves go for convenience. Now, if it's like somebody who like steals cars for like chop shops or to ship them overseas and weird stuff like that, then they might, they on some gone in 60 seconds shit. Uh, but, but I would, yeah, uh, I would, I would like to look that up for the next episode or something maybe or look that up online, but I, I would venture to say or, or assume that the average thief, don't ask me how I know, would not want to go for something that's more difficult to, <laughs> I, I I would think so. that they I would think the average for like theft would be skewed because it's still not as many people with electric cars than other like regular cars in general so it's going to look like it's low theft anyway because the majority of the people that's buying these electric cars they got disposable money to buy an electric car pretty much people are still iffy about electric cars don't know where the stations are or whatever so if you're not like so if you're the average person that just need a car to go from place to place 
electric car probably wouldn't be the best bet to go to. Tell you what, I wish I could show Until... There's electric car docking stations at a lot of people's cribs. My uh, sister-in-law has a, one of them electric <clears throat> BMWs. And uh-huh. like she pulls up to the front of our crib, goes down there to where like the power company goes and plugs right on in, front right by the street. Uh-huh. So it's a way to do it. I think people just may not realize it or they may not have the yeah. right adapters. But if they get this thing, they can do it on their own and take their charging station in the house with them. Like they charge that yeah, shit when, I, they, when they sitting right there and can watch it. And then overnight, like ch- I would charge my shit like during the day when I'm at work or somewhere secure. Oh. And then at nighttime, just have my shit in the crib, just sitting there with my charger now, station in the house. Are all of them, like, I know some of them get, are solar. Are all of them solar or just like optional? The charging station? No, like the actual cars themselves, like the electric cars. I know some. I, I, I saw some of them like had like the feature where they can they be they can have the solar power and electric power. I I I've heard that too. I don't <clears throat> know enough about that to go into those waters. Yeah, I, mean, I did. That was the case. Say you at work, right? Now you mm-hmm. got a double charge going, on, so you'd be extra good. So. Say you go to work in the daytime, you park in a parking lot in the middle of the fucking parking lot, the sun charging your car. You feel me? Boom. No, that's but cool. then you go to the charging station, you got the mobile charging station come too, just in case you know where I got a long drive, I'm be out at night too. So you can always call a little. So, I mean, that mobile station, do they like, are they only, how can I phrase the question? They go in everywhere, like residential and commercial. So the the way this thing looks, um, okay, hold on, give me a sec. So the way this thing looks, it kind of looks like you know one of them portable vacuum cleaners, like uh-huh. the machine itself. Like you can stack like four, five of them shits on top of each other, and they come up to do waste. Oh shit. Yeah, hold on. Let me um I got you. Let me do this for you, bro. So cuz I think that this might put it into a better context person. So do you see that? These are four or five, six of these things on top of each other. Um another picture of them is right here. So that's what this looks like. This is the station. So uh-huh. like you can take that in the house with you. And you can change the range. So, like, it's like, it seems like it's going to be wired up off of some type of network where you can plug it up anywhere from what from what I'm understanding from that article. You feel me? So, boom. If that's the pro, if that's how I look, money, just, just looking at the money scheme of what this man possibly could do going forward. Electric cars are always on the road. You know, they got... The, um, each state has some people employed that just drive up and down the highways and help people on the side of the road. You feel me? Mm-hmm. What well, mm-hmm. got a government contract to provide the government with the old shit? So when people cars go dead on the side of the highway, motherfuckers come back and charge their car right there on the spot. Yeah, that's smart. That's probably what's going to lead to anyway. Yeah, <clears throat> especially if they get popular, because people who can't afford the machine themselves will probably need still need that service. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, well, that's bread. Bro. I would actually that's see like, this I, thing going past just the government, but going to any roadside assistance type service. So from tow trucks uh-huh. on down to like anybody that does that type of service them just having that as like a standard part of their machinery. Yeah. So when they roll out to you, if you have an electric car, they can just jump your shit up and uh, get you right in an hour or whatever and charge you for that that charging time to get you to your next place. You know what I mean? Like, it'd be just like when you call them out and and, and they come out (laughs) with a little can of gas that gets you to the gas station, so... Yeah. The first, the first. first company that start doing that, they they're gonna they're gonna be ahead of the class. Like they're gonna yeah 
leap in front of everybody. It's going to have to be a larger consumer market for electric yeah. cars, though. The electric car market is going to have to come down on their price to where an electric mm-hmm. car is just as feasible financially as a regular purchase. And that's yeah. the hard part. Stuff you do, this is a money maker thing. Now, just to say, he doesn't outsource any of the materials that's necessary to make it. What if he and only his company knows how to make the parts for the machine? You feel me? So anytime mm-hmm. something goes wrong, you got to go right back to the original company to get something fixed with it. It's just keeping the money coming back inside and back in. What? Because yeah. if anybody else sends the parts, you can always take it to somebody else to fix. So that's you lose the revenue right there if something goes wrong with it. Oh, as soon as this goes commercial, it. somebody's going to bootleg it. China's probably already working on their prototype right now. Oh, you know it. Made you out of coal. It. Instead of spark charge, yeah. it's going to be it's going to be charged spark or something. Yeah. Yeah. Watch YouTube on them little gadgets they be creating over there. What they have some shit over there, boy. Yeah, China, China's different. Dude was eating at a table. And Japan. And then he beat up. And it went from a table to a motherfucking shelf on the wall. And the shit that was on the table went from on the table to in the shelves of the shit on the wall. I was like, that shit's magnificent. I want that shit from my house. You know what I saw something simple today, and I bet you it came from China. Have y'all seen the chair legs? Hmm? So you use these things you strap to your legs, right? And you walk around. But when you want to sit down, you can sit down anywhere. You literally just sit down and it and like these things on your legs turn into a chair support system where you can just have a chair anywhere. I like that. That's awesome. This shit is that the is... most amazing shit I saw <laughs> ever. I was like, what in the fuck is that? And it, it go right. on like the back of your legs. And you just be walking around. The dude was just walking around like chilling and then just sat and was just sitting there chilling. What the fuck? You know how yeah. great that is? Like, say you in a line at a concert or you at like a festival yeah. where it's nowhere to sit. Or it's like a place where space is limited, but you want to be comfortable. Oh, man. Hanging out with a shopper. Bruh, I'm going to tell you the most basic thing. You ever been at a cookout and seating is limited? So everybody kind of standing around talking? You ever just wanted to be in the middle of the conversation and just... Uh Uh-huh, go on, go on. You know how far that is? Be in that line at Walmart, like, man, fuck this. And don't let it have a strong support system. I'm going to tell you what was funny. Online, the people who was looking at it, uh, my wife showed me this post with it in there or whatever, but online, the comments was talking about, imagine this back in the day, like you be at the party and you dancing with the girl and you wanted a support, but you you couldn't find that wall to lean on. Oh my God. Let me just sit my ass down. Come on, girl. What? That's a cheat. Yeah, that's a why. You out with your <sighs> wife. You out with your wife. Instead of having to pull up a chair, go ahead and have a seat, baby. Like, you're what? dancing. You want to hit. You want to hit the matrix, but you don't ah! want to fall back. Ah! And then you get right back up and start cheating. Hey, that should be hard, bro. I'm telling you, man. That's the, that's the coolest little contraption I've seen, though. And I and I bet you somebody from some Asian country. Created it. Uh huh. Either that, or or it's one of those things that is like on, uh, as, as seen on TV, where some uh-huh. random person in Wisconsin was just tinkering around in their garage, uh-huh. and they was trying to make something else, but ended up finding out that they could do that, and was like, oh, "That's usually God. how it starts." Yeah, that's usually how it goes. But that's the positive black news tonight, y'all. Uh, don't really know how we got to chair legs, but um, hope y'all can use it. Hope it inspired. Hope it uh, added some joy to your day and um, oh, yeah. week. And um, yeah, man, I, I think you know. Anytime we get it in with some positivity, it's always a good thing. You know, some good stuff 
that just make you feel fuzzy inside. So um, I think it, it's only right that we go from like this amazingly positive black news straight into that time. Oh, yeah. I think it's time. I think it's time. I think it's time to talk that shit. I think it's time to talk that shit. But if y'all okay. feel like it's that time, because I'm too loopy to tell it. what time it is. Let's get it, bruh. Let's talk this shit, man. What is it? Episode 50. It's episode 50. Episode 50. 50 Coming at the end, yeah. Go ahead and fuck her. Oh, shit, my arm. I got a sick vid that I don't get this. Ten of the mock, but red on a drop, but set out an off, but. Oh man, I can't do the chill, but yeah, it's good and fuckery time. My arm is really yeah. Yeah. Hey, do y'all ever notice? I know uh last week Pat was talking about the game and how he always talking about the Impala. Y'all yeah. ever notice how many times 50 Cent has talked about his Beretta? He really likes that gun. Bro, it's always bro. the my book. Redder than I'm buh, redder than I'm buh, redder than my buh. That's his redder. favorite rhyme scheme. That's all I'd it be is. Like, his God favorite damn, rhyme scheme. man. Like, you ain't got no other guns. You rich. Yeah, better. Nah, yeah, don't, bro, bro, don't fix it. Nah, F and E something else than a Beretta. Did Kanai got a, a Beretta? Let me stop. <laughs> Did you say Kanai? <laughs> like Carl nah, Kanai? I haven't no, heard anything Kanan. about Carl Kanan. Kanan in years. Oh, Kanan. Kanan. I was like, Kanai? Carl Kanai? Kanai? The jeans, man? I fucked it up. I always, the, I always the, the dude that used to man. make purple and orange jeans. Oh, man, that's weird. He did. That was That's a weird... That's a weird... That was back in the 90s oh. when they had uh, used jeans. And guess... It was a big, it was a big dope boy, uh... Apparel. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that, um, y'all know Fubu is back. I went to Walmart. Fubu, the look, the style, the clothes. I went to Walmart, and it's like a whole section in rack of like the fact Fubu. that you said Walmart, nigga. Oh my god, <laughs> Fubu is in Walmart. Th- that the mm. fact that that's where it's placed says everything <laughs> about what we need to know about FUBU right now in 2021. Yeah, they, that they, tells us it, it's placed everything. in the food chain. But it was uh, I was like, I looked at Walmart, it. Walmart, huh? Is, is that real? What? They really they really brought this back? Like, seriously? Um, right. Yes, they did. All right. Like that wasn't on the list for good and fuckery. I just, you know, just brought that up. Get, y'all gonna go out and get y'all some platinum FUBU? Hey, hey, hey. Nah, I, like I had like I one like FUBU shirt in my life. Y'all remember when the fake FUBU shirts came out, the bootlegs, and instead of the big ass FB, it would be like a big PB? F. It'd be no, like, it would be yeah. like a big PB. Be P- PB. <laughs> like peanut butter. Yep. What is that? Then they had the one, then they had I the ones that was like F- FB shirts. F and then the O five and then the B or something like that and then wouldn't be exactly yeah nigga that is know. FB that is not FUBU fat bastard is not the same thing <laughs> football <laughs> football is not, does not count I don't know who owns the company frisky business does not work in Walmart they're making some money I'm sure especially from nostalgic people or from that mom and dad who cheap as hell mm-hmm. and it's school time yeah I know but look this is a name brand right here come on get this FUBU we're going to get you well, this FUBU look at this this is a nice outfit this fits you nice come on get this there's a lot of kids growing up now that don't know nothing, don't know nothing about the brand at all exactly see that's what they true Every, that's true goes and these label whore ass kids is going to Fucking roast these FUBU wearing kids. Now you gonna get away with it in elementary school because at that point the kids don't really care about brands. They just happy to be having like you had to light up shoes and be the man for the whole year. So like they don't care about it then. But like when they get to like that middle school range these days and they start realizing what what Jordans are and what uh 
these name brand clothes are, what Nike is and all that, like, they're going to be like, FUBU. Mm -hmm. Mama, you buy me FUBU from Walmart? Like, the fact, think about this. You got to take your kid into Walmart and get through that conversation with a middle school age kid. Talking about, I'm going school shopping for anything other than drawers and socks. If you walk into Walmart, that's a conversation in 2021. Growing up for us, that was the norm. Kmart, Roses, uh -huh. uh, Walmart, counter when it first came out. Or you would go to like the discount street stores where they would have the fake FUBU, but they would also have like these <laughs> more like street level <clears throat> brands. Like RP fifty five and uh and Nietzsche, shit like that. Pele. Yes, yes. Right. Your Pele Pele. Yes, yes, yes. You feel me? Your Helle Hans and like these brands that they weren't quite at the nautical level, but people would see you wearing them and you wouldn't get roasted. But it would be like them little. It's in the back of the mall. It's like kind of by the pet store. It don't really go along with no other stores around it, but it, it sell clothes. That'd be where you go. But in 2021, you walking a kid into Walmart. Oh my God. Middle school kid. <clears throat> now, like I said, elementary school kid, fifth grade and down, all best off. Like them kids don't give a damn. They be like, shit. Oh, I'm getting a bunch oh, of outfits. Yeah. They just happy because they getting a bunch of stuff. I, you know. I got a preteen who's about to be a teenager this week. Oh boy. I'd rather just give her the damn money and just yep. let her loosen it though. This is what you have. Go get what you can get. Yep. You know how to add. There you go. Let me know when you're done. It's a lot yep. easier. Let that her go back 13 back. shirts from Forever 21 or something. My feelings to be hurt for me buying you some shit to be like daddy. I don't like that. Motherfucker, I ain't had a choice. I don't know what the fuck I got, but this is 2021 and I can't be that. Type you know of what the good part about it is, though? And this is where men get fucked over. Girls and women's clothing is cheaper and usually comes from stores with better service. So you can return shit easy as fuck for women. You try uh -huh. returning a pair of jeans for a nigga, man, you got to. Bring back 13 receipts, a notarized copy of your birth certificate, two passports, a fingerprint, thumb scan. Like, it got to be card. like 30 things. Like, nigga, like, or, or one pair of jeans is like on the low end for like, like if you're buying a cheap pair of jeans, which for a dude is like a pair of Levi's, something like that, you know, just a basic pair of jeans. That's, that used to be 30. 40 bucks. Now a basic, plain ass, dungaree ass pair of damn Levi's is fucking like 70, 80, 90 bucks. Uh -huh. You want to buy a real pair of jeans, like some nice jeans. Oh, you're looking at a couple hundred all the way up to a thousand, depending on the brand. Damn shame. Woman going to the same store you walk into with a hundred dollars. You gonna come out with one item in one bag. She gonna come out with 13 items in one bag, another bag with like four pair of pants, two hats, a necklace that she really liked, a fragrance that was on sale. And it's gonna be all for that honey. And she might have $10 left over to take y'all out to Johnny Rockets or something and get you a burger or a shake or something real quick. Like that's how weird it is with women. So you actually lucky there, bro. You you lucky. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> These little niggas, man. My son, like literally, was just in a size one. Shoot. In a size, <laughs> in a size six pants and shirt. That was like a few months ago. Literally, it was like overnight. He woke up and the clothes he had on was literally too small for him. Like, dude, you went to sleep in this. We just saw you last night. He woke up with high waters on out of nowhere. Like, is somebody stretching you while you sleep? What, is something happening? What? Like, this dude jumped up a whole shoe size 
for no reason. Like he didn't like go to like one, one and a half, two. It was like, nope, one. And then like the next week, that sh- the new shoe that we just the boys on like his fourth or fifth pair of shoes this school year. Foot growing yeah. so big, foot got so big, yeah, this dude pulled a Zion Williamson at recess, busted uh, through his Nikes. Like really? the soul, like the soles were flapping. Dude came out of school. I come to pick him up. His shoes is talking to me like, hey daddy, hey daddy, hey daddy. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, I got a little rough at recess, Dad. How did this happen? Well. I don't know. I was in class and my and my toe started feeling like it was at the front of my shoe. And then at recess, it just happened. I was like, but this morning I just put your shoe on you. You said I, I just felt your shoe. Your, your toe had like a good half an inch left. What what what, what are you doing? He like the wand of vision kids. He aging himself while he <laughs> like he gets stressed out and age himself. Oh, I got a test today. <gasps> Oh man! <laughs> All right, yo, that, that that shit hit a dad nerve in me, man. Like this shit is ridiculous. You know, like why are you growing like that? Like why do kids grow like that? Like what is what? Is, and I, I'm like, I feed you, so I know you ain't eating like some steroids and then like what are you? What's going on with you? Like, is it the organic shit? Do we need to feed you some sloppy shit to make you like unhealthy? Something so you can stunt for a second, like. <laughs> And stay in some clothes for like a couple weeks. Cause at this point, we just be having brand new ass outfits that he never gets to wear. They just sit. This just this just proves that eating healthy is expensive in more ways than one. Bruh. <laughs> this this shit is for the birds. Like if anybody wants a uh, a child that uh grows at a very disproportionate rate to what he should be. Um, feel free. Hit me up. Y'all know the email address. Uh, I read him out. He's very strong. Yeah, but, uh, him out. but you got to clothe him yeah. for that weekend because he will go up. Uh, it's already in a in a seven eight, uh, depending on the the, the brand and uh size two shoe in general. So uh, have fun with that. Dress him in 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 sizes two like two sizes up. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, well. yeah. You you gonna wanna you gonna wanna. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry for derailing the good and fuckery with that. But yeah, dad talk with the pot. <laughs> dad talk with the pot. And a little bit of uncle talk. How how should I start this fuckery out? All right, I'm, I'm Man, gonna just say start it. Just stuff. go ahead without the extra stuff. Just go ahead, <laughs> get it, get into this shit. Let's talk this bullshit. All right, um, all right, Chris Pratt. You know he, you know he's Star Lord. He, he's playing Super Mario in the movie or whatever. He's also playing Garfield in another Garfield movie. He's 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 trying to be everybody's childhood, everybody's childhood. He's definitely Next, uh, crushing it right now. There yeah, is anyway. there is a rumor that Jim Carrey might end up in the MCU. As who? Adam Warlock? No, no, no. A it, it's, it's, one, it's one of them joke villains. Um, Modoc. His name is Modoc. He's a big giant head that controls AIM. He's a scientist or whatever. Oh, and I think he's the, um, what does that stand for? Modoc. That would be um, hilarious. Um, that would be hilarious. But Modoc is freaking hilarious for no reason. No. Oh, that reason. is an acronym, ain't it? Uh, what is, yeah. what is that? It's Damn. something designed for killing. It's something uh, oh, I'm about to find this. What is his name? Because now that's going to bother me. I'm going to find it out. It's Moda. Mechanized Moda. organism designed only for killing. Yes, that's it. Yeah. Name oh, that's going to be hilarious. It's Jim Carrey. I'm looking at the picture of this fucker. 
That's <laughs> gonna yeah. be funny. Shit, a big ass with little arms and legs. <laughs> yeah, he's a joke villain. He gets joked on by everybody all the time. So, and I think uh, he yeah. actually got a um. Uh, they got that one meant to be roasted. <laughs> they got a cartoon um about him too. It's hilarious. I think my brother put me on to it. Pretty much, but yeah, that's one thing. Uh, that ought to be interesting. I did not see that coming. What movie is he coming going to be in? Or what show they is he going to be in to come in? They don't know yet. They just this is just the the rumor that's out there right okay. now. So Ooh. they still trying to confirm. Speaking but, of. MCU. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the uh, uh, Mobius? More, more is it today. Morbius? Mobius? Morbius. Yeah, Morbius. The, uh, vampire. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. J um, Jared Leto is playing him. Morbius. I think they're doing Ooh. that good. Yes, I think they're doing his origin real good. Like it's random I mean, aside. Much is, mm -hmm. Does he show up in Blade? Mm. See, he's. He's owned by Sony, so I don't think it would happen. Oh, but so in the they comic book, like uh, Spider Man for a minute, and then like he's he's in the Venom Spider Man Sony verse, depending on when they feel character. like using them over in mm -hmm. MCU. Yeah, yeah. But there's been plenty of times where him and Blade has crossed paths. That's and what that I was would saying. be a dope situation. Yeah. That would okay. be definitely a super uh, dope situation. As a matter of fact, they crossed paths in um, the Spider-Man movie in the 90s. It was Spider-Man cartoon in the 90s, matter of fact. The Daywalker and the Super mm -hmm. But the thing is, he's not hes not a vampire in the sense that we normally know of or whatever. He's a vampire in the sense that he's experimented on himself yep. and um, with bats Self -design. To cure a disease, and then with him experimenting with these bats to cure the disease, he end up got getting the coronavirus, and now he's a vampire. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> you stupid as hell! But there's little there's little Easter eggs in the trailer, or whatever, and I'm I'm still trying to figure out like what Spider Man verse. Is he in? Because like there's like a picture of the Tobey Maguire Spider Man, but it has murder, murderer over it. And if you know in the last one, they accused Tom Holland as murderer of mm -hmm. Mysterio. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, but you used the Tobey Maguire picture for that. Okay, yeah. Because didn't he kill just... one of the goblins? Um, well, yeah, the, 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 the first one, but at that, that's one thing that is true. That Instead is of becoming true. a hero and going on to the second and third movies, he becomes the murderer and becomes of, of one of the top businessmen in the city. Mm. But they do have Oscorp in, in the movie. They Hence why Oscorp. I asked that question. Mm hmm. But yep. at this, at, at the same time, if they're in the same Venom verse or whatever, I seen like the end credits because I haven't seen the second Venom just yet or whatever. But I seen the end credits and they got Tom Holland Spider Man in there, so I'm I'm I don't know, man. I'm I'm real curious to see how this is going to turn out. Pretty much, I but it, it, all in all, all in all, it looks like a good movie, even though like a lot of people are like putting light um like dislikes on the trailer because they're mad that it's not the no um the no way home trailer for spider-man everybody Ooh. just really want to see the spider-man trailer so to be petty but it's not dropping yet you gotta i be know but, yeah but, i like know, they're that petty. they're making it i i like the way and this may not be but I feel like Marvel is starting to lean more into tying everything into the general theme of whatever their phase is. And this theme, this phase being all about the multiverse and things being out of order mm -hmm. and out of array. I feel like they're dropping trailers and doing shows out of order on purpose to yeah, fit that you off. mode. Yeah. Not even to throw you off, but just to but represent just the 
how this array of the universe at the moment. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like they put mm-hmm. that much time and thought in the stuff that they do, even yeah, in their marketing, that I feel like that has something to do with it. Like the multiverse was a a compromise, if you will. With by saying multiverse, we can have all these random movies and just say, hey, somewhere in the multiverse. Hey, that's how it makes sense. All right. <clears throat> Correct. Which is also the general cop out with comic books anyway. Whenever there's a random writer but that I, wants I to like get picked. It. I mean, I, I like it too. We're in a then it, visual it gives you a different comic book. perspective, you know. We're like in yeah, a, yeah. not a visual, but a, a, a live action comic book. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, exactly. This shit is amazing as a fan of <clears throat> superheroes and shit. This shit is dope as fuck. But it's like I it's like I said before, man, like it's it's our generation growing mm-hmm. up realizing, hey, this is what we really would want in movies and technology. Right. And then we're actually getting it. You know what I'm saying? Like we all grew up, nobody would ever think there's gonna be a Black Panther movie one day. That's real. You know what I'm saying? I did not yeah. see that coming. That was that's probably never. The we would one. never that and, um You could barely get a Superman movie, like in the nineties, because they would have afraid to do it. That and Aquaman, no. Black Panther, and Aquaman are two superheroes. I did not yeah, think Aquaman I would see them like a full and then, movie about or nothing. Now, now we got Ant Man and Guardians of the Galaxy, like people we wouldn't even <laughs> think about. It's gonna be a freaking Eternals movie and. And on Friday or whatever. And speak on that, they say that it's not. I want to see it because I'm curious because I'm a Marvel fan. I've heard. Anything. But oh, go ahead, say, go ahead, say. I'm sorry. I I was going to say, if it doesn't do what normal Marvel movies are expected to do, it would still make sense because Eternals is a comic book. That people just frankly don't ever give a fuck about. Right. Now, mind you, no disrespect with Jack Kirby, um, the creator of the Eternals or whatever, but like their struggle and the stuff that they go through is not really related to anything else in the Marvel Universe outside of, well, on the ground level. Now, yeah. as far as the cosmic level, yeah. But, but it's their history and while. stuff is tied, but their day to day activity. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Like you can literally. They're not coming not, to fight Thanos. <laughs> I would say. You don't. You can have a Marvel universe without the Eternals. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. 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 That, that's the thing. But you can't have. You can't have a Marvel universe without Iron Man. You can't have a Marvel universe without Captain America. You yep. definitely can't have a Marvel universe without Spider Man, and the MCU knew that, and that's why they made that deal with Sony. I'll be honest, <clears throat> you can't have a Marvel universe without Doctor Strange, Scarlet Witch, and um, what's the, oh, I, I just had it, I just had it, and uh, Ant Man because on some level because. Hank Pym is such an integral part to so many storylines, like Howard Stark is. Then you mm. got, uh, uh, damn man, why am I brain farting? I literally just said this shit myself. Who was the other two I said? You got Ant Man. You got to have him because of Hank Pym. Uh, Scarlet Witch. Dr. You got to have Scarlet Witch because her her main story. Is so impactful in the Marvel universe as a whole, especially mm-hmm. to Marvel universe <clears throat> fans. Like, you have to incorporate something about her and her arc at some point, like to satisfy that. And then mm-hmm. um, Doctor Strange. Well, you you have to have the Time Stone, obviously, but then also yeah. he's a <clears throat> big part of like the way things operate in a lot of the layers yeah. of the day-to-day storyline. So it's like, you got to have certain people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but he, the Eternals, man, like, I heard I mean, it's going to be a movie that 
you can't go into looking for the normal MCU formula because it's very yeah like but if you like character driven narratives you'd love it if you're looking yeah, for like, action bang bang maybe not well I mean it still look like it has action in it but I, yes like, it does I, I I'm just yeah yeah like I I would say I'm not I'm gonna look into it as a movie I'm not really gonna base it off of like critics and stuff like that because half the time these people are not even comic book heads this is true so so like i really don't care what what is it called tomatoes like rotten tomatoes rotten tomatoes i don't care what they say it's a lot half the time or whatever they have stuff in it and don't even it don't even reflect what i would say about the movie pretty much or whatever so not yeah, I, I'm. If I'm I looking get a forward to the movie. It, so. I still, it's still three movies. I still need to see Chang Chi, but that's going to come out on Disney Plus soon. Uh, uh, I think it's the fifth. Yeah, is it? Well, fifth or fifteenth? It's one of the two. I think no, I mean Chang Chi uh, is the fifth on on Disney Plus. It's 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 something with a five, I believe. I think it's the fifteenth for that, and I think yeah. Eternals is this is the fifth, pretty much, but. I'm yeah, really that, that. yeah, that, that we're gonna see. I, I, to me, I still think it's a good. It's still gonna look like it's still gonna be a good movie. Um, pretty. It much. looks and then, beautiful. And then Visual. they they have um they're gonna introduce one of my favorite cosmic concepts with Marvel, the Celestials, mm-hmm. which is basically these damn near moon planet size giant well i mean they're not as big as a planet but some of them can be pretty much but these galactic size have a head the size of a small planet yeah these giant huge beings that create planets and it's what ego was yeah well in the mc universe not the little man yeah he projected himself as but the planet yeah is they weird. that's one of them that's an mcu thing like in the comic book he's really just the planet that just yep. has a face with a beard which i always found weird anyway man, bars man, you don't <laughs> have to shave man you know how hard it is to shave a planet sized beard that's true that is true well you get the I'll, I'll tell you one thing i would not want to live on that planet period and i would not want to live w- where the where the beard is <laughs> Just, I tend know. to agree with that. I tend yeah. to agree with that. I'm gonna be on. I don't even want to be on the moon. <laughs> let's, let's be on the planet somewhere else because I don't want to be on Ego's moon. That just sounds suspect to me. Yeah, exactly. Sounds a bit man baggish. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Stop joking about man baggish. It's not a man bag. Oh, no, no, Ego's moon, man. No. Take me to the moon. (laughs) Bang zoom right in the kiss. Let me stop. (laughs) Honeymooners. What are these days, Um, Alice? um, That was the most good. That was. (laughs) That was. Good old white on white cry. Yeah. Thanks again. All right. Here's some black positivity for you. Uh, The Tupac Shakur estate is announcing Wake Me When I'm Free immersive museum experience. Um, It's uh, it's a museum, basically. It's actually an exhibit that explores his life and legacy before his murder in 1996. Um, Pre-sale tickets will go on sale beginning November 9th. Uh, ninth between 10 a.m. Pacific time on what is this? WMWIF.com. Um, that's WMWIF.com. General admission tickets will be available on November 12th Wimwif. at 10 a.m. On Wimwif.com. Yep. Wimwif. Wimwif. Um, Wimwif. And it, the opening, like the grand opening, is in January uh, the 21st, 2022. That's pretty cool. So what exactly type of exhibit is it? Is it like a walkthrough type thing? Is it like a... Yeah. It's okay. like a... I'm, I'm thinking it's like a walk... 
through type thing um pretty much and let me get right into the thing but it's supposed to like like show details of his life pretty much and um they don't really say too much how it's presented because I don't think it's like a one of those things where you just like sit down and watch a video or something. But I don't right. know. I got this. I got this feel like it's one of those. You know how in Captain America he has his own museum. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Like one of those. And it has different. I think it's one of those type things. Like clothes that he <laughs> had on and stuff. From clothes he had on. Artifacts. Video from footage and in a gotcha. in a in a scene or something like that. Pretty much. Gotcha. But yeah, um, and and wrestling news. Don't you say Bow Wow. Actually, No, I'm Don't not going to say, say shit about no damn Bow Wow. I'm not going to say Bow Wow, man. Don't you do it. But, um, Griselda spokesperson, know. Westside Gun, he in is wrestling? a, yes. No, no, not in wrestling. I mean, he's not a wrestler, but he's a avid wrestler, wrestling fan. Like, if you listen to his oh. music, he got, he got ad libs from, classic like wrestling matches or whatever he got um songs that's just named after like matches like he got one called undertaker versus goldberg with conway whatever so <laughs> y- you may often like the past few wrestlemanias you might have seen him right up front shooting past few wrestling events you might seen him right up front or whatever because he's that into it but um he actually helped out uh, an aspiring wrestler uh, to finish the rest of her wrestling um, classes, pretty much. Her name is Alexis Lightfoot, and she was she just tweeted um, five hundred dollars short in my um, fees for wrestling school when she's about um, almost you know about to quit, and he cashed up her five hundred. So yeah, so he, he's one. Of, That's pretty dope. Yeah. Like he do he the way he describes things he's like he do stuff like back in the days we would dream about doing stuff like this like being at WrestleMania and you know in general whatever so that's like that's one of his things like you know how some people they spend money they buy a new car and stuff like that that's like how he likes to spend money or whatever because at a time he didn't he didn't expect that splurging on philanthropy ain't never a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And then he's he's definitely in it. He got um him and Wale. Um it's one other person. Him Wale, I think um Smoke Dizza got a song called Hurt Business. I think that's the name. I think that's who's on that song. But it was for Bobby Lashley. Um or whatever. So he's actually doing a lot of stuff with that. But I thought it was cool. So just brought it up. Um more big news off of his um rock and roll hall of fame achievement or whatever jay-z basically he gave a shout out to dame saying hey we not seeing i know we're not seeing eye to eye but you definitely did a lot to you know get the rockefeller movement going or whatever so okay Dame is yeah. open to squashing the beef. Okay. He said it was, yeah, he said it was beautiful. I'm glad he said said it for the culture. We need to squash everything. So hopefully, if that was an extended olive, extended olive branch in parentheses, I'll spin one back. He said, I have no beef with him. He has no beef with me. Let's get the lawyers out of it. Let's talk like men. He said, "I would. Uh, I would love I for would. them two to reconcile." Mm-hmm. Said, "I would uh, never want you to think that we have to go to court to resolve anything. We could talk it out, and the culture needs to see two strong black men working out a problem. Even if they work together, they can go their separate ways and still be cool." Dash told Page Six, 
we should not be divided. We have accomplished too much to be beefing. There ain't no way I'm never going to not consider him my brother. It's just that we don't see eye to eye. That's real. That's real. Yeah. So, as a as a true Jay Z and Rockefeller fan, man, that makes me genuinely happy to hear that. I, I like that, and I hope them Definitely. teams do get together and uh, squash the beef and find a way to maybe even work together someday. But if nothing else, at least bury the hatchet and not be contentious with <clears throat> each other. So, really big respect to both of them, man. That's 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 a big moment, and I know that took a lot for both of them to say those things to and about each other. So before we get into the fuckery, I heard Faith said he had some good. And if he is still there and not just frozen. <laughs> Faith, you got some Mom. good for us? Is that what is that what we are to believe? Oh, Ready? shit. I think he got something good. Face, did yep. you have something good for us to add before uh, Pat goes into oh, yeah, the fucker? Is that correct? Yes, I do have something good. Um, oh, okay. Back to the other thing that you know. I know you usually uh, smoke that good, but... Oh, oh yeah. That's, and that's what it's about, actually. Um, JR, um, you remember JR from the commentator from WWE? Yeah, oh, yeah. Jim Ross. He's now, he's now getting into the marijuana game. He started, he's opening his own cannabis farm. What are they going to call it? Barbecue and bud? Don't they I already got a barbecue? Been... This is a slobber knocker. <laughs> Yo, that should, be the, that should be the strain right there. Slobber knocker. That's his first slobber interview knock. right there. Slobber knocker. Hey, he might get it. <laughs> slobber knocker, barn burner, um, one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. He got some good names he can go with there, man. That son of a bitch, Stone Cold. Coming, coming up with a brand of marijuana, uh, brand of cannabis brand now. He gonna come with Ooh. that dab called Boom Asuna. <laughs> Who? Mike Fifty Two came up with some company coming up with a um, cannabis brand. You so said Fifty Tyson, huh? You said Fifty Tyson coming out with a cannabis. Mike Tyson. Oh, okay, I can see that. The real Tyson. He's smoking enough. The, the real Mike. Dude. The real champ. The so, real shit. A lot of people are jumping into this morning game. That's always good. Um, yeah, so that's my con- contribution to the good of the good of the Well, right on. Shout out Which to Mike Tyson good. and uh, Jay Z and uh, what, who else was it? Jim what Ross. Jim Ross. I'm definitely interested to see what he come out with. Uh, that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> he's gonna dish your weed. If he's gonna be dissing your weed and be like, "This is a travesty." Man, he about to change the whole culture, man. He gonna have niggas when they get high talking about instead of saying they high, they gonna be like, "Man, I'm on the top turn, buckle boy." It's gonna be him and Westside Gun. Watch. <laughs> it's gonna be him and Westside Gun. I can. Boy, you love a Griselda. I hope they give you a job. They need God to. Damn boy. I don't know. Look, man. I just they are all right, man. God damn, man. At a time where all the music <laughs> sounded the same, Not I got ever. a bit of nostalgia. So, but yeah, they be doing things, man. I just like it, man. <laughs> they are. All right, man. You keep hyping them up like that, man. You gonna make the hater in me come out, man. You can make me just start saying fuck them niggas for nothing. I don't want to do that. I, I'm, I like Conway. I like uh, Ben. I like West. Oh, don't make me say. Yeah. Don't make me do that. This, there's rumors of some tension going on between Conway and another Didn't rapper. they break up already? One time? Nah. Or somewhere they, they had stopped. Oh, not not nobody ever broke up. Or one, of, one of them, or one of them left like the collective for a minute. Um, nah, it's more like uh I think uh Conway's deal with Shady was over with. Westside, he just wanted to get out of his deal because he felt like it wasn't. He wasn't able to get to the next level for himself under that deal, pretty much. But Shady I don't know where he think he gonna go to that's gonna get him to the next level. He about at the level he gonna be at. Like he raps about a very particular niche of rap. Like you ain't gonna go but so far with that. <laughs> well, you he ain't got no. Like... You ain't got nothing else for nobody else outside of that group. 
he um he's more talking about like business deal stuff like that. So when he t- money that. is so, there when you have yeah. the record sales and or concert to justify. He ain't got that. He don't got the social media following. He don't got like he don't have none of those boxes that you can check to get a better deal. Like he'd be better off renegotiating it's, with that company that he already got a relationship with than trying to form a new one that's still not going to like promote a, him any uh, better or anything. Like it's it's not more, it's boom it's back, more like, nigga. I ain't nobody trying to hit that boom in the no more, nigga. What a melody, man. Nigga's trying to feel good. It's more like it's ownership thing. It's not. It's not like um, how say he want to do certain moves or whatever, but their contractual agreements or whatever is in the way of him doing certain moves. It's it's certain things like that because he you know he does a lot um, with fashion and things like that outside of just rap. And really, he's not really he really just started rapping because so he in a three hundred and sixty type thing where they control like his stuff that ain't got nothing to do with music. It's not really 360 or whatever. Oh, it's just that he You don't know. I got it. Yeah, I don't know too much into it, but <laughs> like the way he <laughs> was about to end up in one of them rabbit holes. I'm I'm good. I no, mean, no, pull up when I see it. I see it, it coming. I'm gonna pull it, up right now. It's it's one of those things where it's his it's his contract, and because I'm not his lawyer, I don't know too much about it. So when he talks about it and like interviews and things like that. He just basically say vague things like under them, I wasn't able to do certain things that I wanted to do or move certain like that. So he don't get too into the specifics of the contract. That makes so more sense. Really the next level. Much. It was the next level mm-hmm. comment that confused me because I'm like, well, what level yeah. are you trying to get to play? Are you rich? You're. I mean, more per- his own personal level of goals and stuff like that. That's that's what I meant. Or whatever. Not talking about next. Like he he knows where he's at as far as that. He wasn't even trying to rap. The reason, like the main reason why he started rapping, was the people that he was promoting at the time with the, they were in jail, and one of them died. So he just did it to keep the the name going. And then when Conway came back, he pushed them out. So he basically put the team on his back until they, everybody came off, pretty much. So, but. Time for the fuckery. Time for the fuckery. Not really. I'm, I'm started. Is, is he raising his hand? <laughs> he did. Raising his hand. Either that or he was question. waving. I'm not really sure. Or he was doing the nay nay. <laughs> or hitting them folks. Or doing the senior. I'm not sure what the hell he's doing down there. So, um, in this fuckery. <laughs> Uh, Halloween edition. I hope everybody enjoyed the Halloween. Um, I went to sleep and I smoked <laughs> pretty much. Um, oh, I did went out on Saturday. I'll get into that later. Um, so let's start it off. Kanye and uh, invited M- Marilyn Manson to one of his Sunday services on Halloween. Okay. And, yeah, that was it was crazy. The Antichrist Superstar was there leading a prayer circle with Justin Bieber and Kanye West. Oh. And and Is Roddy he Rich. He's well, I mean, his his um I believe his father was a actual pastor. Was a Got pastor it. or a preacher. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And more than likely his whole music was to rebel against his parents, basically. That makes sense because of the remix on the uh the jail remix. So, okay. Mm-hmm. We so, are uh, liars. You know, you know how you know the rockers get once they get old or whatever, they start seeing the Lord again, and uh, so it, seeing the light. It's uh, it's rumors that that Kanye might have converted him back to Christianity. Now, I'm not wow. sure yet because this is Marilyn Manson, but. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, that, that, I have no objections to that. All right. That I I find that actually that was pretty crazy. Pretty gosh darn crazy. I would not have expected that. Especially the way Marilyn Manson had his run. <laughs> for Agreed. The but yeah. you never know, man. You never know. 
you never ever know or whatever um some of the fuckery that i've seen this weekend Mm -hmm. i I remember last podcast when i said um shouts out to all the velmas that's going to be out on halloween yes some of y'all velmas are very lazy with y'all costumes man why was this a new costume this year? Like, I didn't really see it out a lot, but I also wasn't going to like a lot of adult. See, it's, it's um, like, why I was that a say, costume for this year? Was there a Scooby Doo movie that came out every once in a while? No, nah, I, I mean, everyone it's it in like the artsy cartoon cosplay community, Velma being thick is like a kind of like an inside joke did that just start this year though like i don't recall no that started that being a thing where no. people was dressing up as velma before this no nah, it didn't it didn't start this year it it started oh it's been a running joke for a long time but this year especially now since it's like the first halloween we you know past the pandemic or whatever everybody is like waiting to dress up because they didn't have a halloween last year and i don't know for some reason just velma is like the popular animated girl character right now like it's always one popular animated girl character that for some reason in this generate i don't want to say generation but this error or whatever they all want to dress up like like because they see one or two people or one or two famous people dress up like them and they like yeah i want to do that now or at least ig famous people nowadays but before her it was mm-hmm. harley quinn before now, harley, harley quinn, quinn it was, makes sense yeah, yeah. but yeah. after harley quinn is like I think I think people just ran out of ideas. If you like, if you go back to Catwoman, that's everybody's done Catwoman before. Everybody, yeah, but because they Woman usually before. do whatever the hot girl is from that year, like. So what they've done is decided, and on, and it might be some body body positivity thing. They decided we're going to just pick a character that no one would ever expect, make them sexy, and if you can actually make Velma. Look sexy. You did something. I'm going to look into it. It's but, it got to be a reason that all of a sudden, Velma out of all the kids, nah, all of a sudden, nah, the, the thing for this year. Mm-mm. Nah, it's just, I don't know. Scooby Doo is like a running joke in the background. Like, even like um, even with Shaggy, like, is this running joke that, like, and I think it's because, um, I don't know if y'all are familiar, but they got like this like um video game system called Mujin where you can play it's like you're playing Street Fighter but you can play any character like you could have Ryu fight Peter Griffin you can have Peter Griffin fight Big Bird you can have people will go on the system make up characters or whatever so you can make them and I've seen one where they have Shaggy and and then they have this thing like where Shaggy has like Goku powers or whatever. So they always picking Scooby-Doo characters or whatever some for some reason and then just adding some extra shit to it. In your words, but, no, no, because you said they have <laughs> characters like Shaggy and them fighting. Ain't no year when we ever went out for Halloween was we rolling up on Thick, thick Velma's out here, like talk about this oh, is a new thing. Velma. But that's what say I'm saying. A, Every it's, time it's, you, it's, how is that? I was saying, how is what sparked that particular thing? Is what I'm trying to figure out. I get what you saying that yeah, that's the thing for this year. But I, I, the I, why I'll, I'll is what one. I don't understand I, of that particular thing this year. I, I don't. Know you don't same, know. You guess it. Same you reason. Speculate. It's the same. It's the same. Like there's certain things don't have a, a certain answer. Like it's, it's like it's like asking yes, they who do. Made that meme. That's, no, they don't. 
Not in this world. Like, <laughs> Dad, no cool. cartoon. Things have an answer. You might not like the answer. The answer may not make sense, but there is an answer. You ain't giving me an answer. You're giving me your guess. I'm there just saying is. I want to look it up. Why is that bothering you? There's no, I mean, you can look it up and everything, but it's like, I I have not seen no Yo, big thing. Yo, don't you Velma take another this. fucking vaccine, nigga. <laughs> I want you Trip. tonight, man. Yeah, yeah since that damn it. game yeah. shit, man. What's wrong with you? You trying to pick an argument a week. <laughs> Bust some gas tank. Just a bunch of people, man, that just want to dress up as Velvet. That's all. That's all it is. Oh, or whatever, man. but... Oh, shit. oh man, I love when you keep telling me you you double down on shit because you don't know instead of just saying I don't know. Like you, like, <laughs> you want something else. <laughs> Why are women wearing what's her name? Velma or Thel- Velma? Velma V E L M Velma costumes. Velma G. I see the costumes. <laughs> I don't see nothing about no thick Velma. It's just Velma. You got you got to hit the Instagram, man. You want to see? <laughs> oh, okay. So there's some type. So it's an Instagram. Okay, let me see some. Uh huh. Social media crazy. Let me put. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's why I'm saying. That's why. It's so there's a reason. But you ain't saying <laughs> that's the shit. That's it's the shit. That the that was up. Yeah, I that's what I'm saying. No, that ain't what you saying, nigga. You saying people just always been saying Scooby Doo in the background because of some video game called Mojin and all this bullshit. You ain't saying that. If you had said that, I would have been like, oh, that's why it's an Instagram craze. I would have been on the same page. <laughs> then when I say I'm gonna look it up, you where they just but I see it. Well, I'm I still see it more than up, Instagram. You don't I, know because you ain't answering I, my question. <laughs> but I see it more than Instagram though. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you didn't, man. I quit, yo. All right, yo, you right. <laughs> you got it, kid. Well, all I was saying is some of y'all are just lazy, man. It was just some of y'all just put some put a shirt together and, and a skirt together or whatever and it don't even look like Velma it's just like you got the color scheme going on that was that fuckery the other fuckery I saw this weekend is I saw this couple <laughs> dress up <laughs> I saw this cu- couple dress up and this woman was dressed like a dick and her and she had her tits propped up like they were balls and then I guess her her spouse or whoever she was with, the guy was dressed up as a giant vagina. The shit threw me the fuck off. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just in there because I was bored. I was out. Um, went to a random bar and then they just come in. Bad choice of words when I say they just come in. Or whatever, but that was the craziest <laughs> shit. <laughs> But she just she had to act. I imagine she just had her to. It's like, look, I can't even really look at you. <laughs> Don't even talk to me right now. I can't even really look at you. Balls and dick. All right. That I I just had to talk about it because that shit threw me the fuck off. Like y'all 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 sat down and thought about this, didn't you? Y'all could wait. Y'all could not wait to put this on. Y'all could not wait to put this on today. But yeah, that was that fuckery. And another fuckery I would like to address. <clears throat> and I, I think it might fit into the next subject too, or whatever. When is Jada gonna give Will a break? Like when mm-hmm. when is Jada Pickett gonna give her give Give her husband a break, man. Like we'll just be out here just trying to be a good human being or whatever. And then that that's my thing. It's like you're not gonna get it's not like Will Smith is one of those reckless men that's like it's not like he's future or something. You know what I'm saying? Like he don't even cuss in his raps <laughs> or, or, or whatever. 
But I just feel like he just now what what she was saying I, now that what are I, uh, you talking that, about? What did she do to him? <laughs> what the she, fuck is I I was I will say I was gonna say Jada was um oh. on a table talk and what was it? Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> she has a new show. And then they started talking about Will and Jada's relationship all over. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you mean, I... Jada. Not just start <laughs> talking about him rapping. <laughs> mm. Mm. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> it's okay, Pat. It's okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to <laughs> okay, I'm tripping. My <laughs> bad. It's me. <clears throat> this is normal. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> we are talking about stuff. Just really. Okay. okay. Good. okay. My bad. I'm out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got Oh man, I think I'm about to roll up my damn self. Wait a minute. But yeah, that's why I'm I'm just bringing it up because I don't know. It just kind of it kind of triggered me when she said certain things. And then when I um what she said was um she, that Will and her they're always in a transparent journey and that um at first when she was she was talking about accountability and at first she was like all right why don't you know you should already know if you love me you know you should be able to read my mind if you love me or whatever and then later on they did so what did you, you say, should Faith? already know what that did you say, she she said um she was talking about like even in sex <laughs> or how y'all just laughing at me and throwing me off. You know I'm off right now, right? <laughs> you know I'm on his back. <laughs> I'm laughing um, at me. I was laughing at that nigga face when it froze and it was just teeth. <laughs> oh shit. But <clears throat> she she was talking about like um when they were trying to understand understand each other when they were first um married and things like that if she was saying that um if why don't you know these things if you love me you should already know you should be able to read my mind or whatever and then she said later on that that she realized that you you know basically you can't just read somebody's mind pretty much or whatever the long story short when i um Good. when i first saw it when I first saw it, I only saw that one clip, and that shit triggered the fuck out of me. Like, what the fuck you mean? If I love you, I should just be able to read your mind. Like, no, tell me what the hell is wrong with you. <laughs> Pretty much. That shit just triggered the fuck out of me, and I think it triggered the fuck out of a lot of people when they saw it, because people were just taking the story and running with it <clears throat> throughout the week. But my thing, it seems like I feel like she don't give Will a break. It's like every six months. Like, man, you all like you, you had the guy on your show. He was damn near in tears or whatever. I have yet to see Will do anything publicly like to like embarrass Jada. But I'm like, God, dang, just give it a break for a second. Like, after that first thing with the entitlement, like, that that situation in, in, in general, I'm sorry. I was like, yeah, you might want to just chill out with just bringing my name up for a while or whatever. And then, But I, I'll give it to Will because he's just out here doing great things. He could, He's being King Richard in that uh, movie. He's probably somewhere right now skydiving. <laughs> out of a, a a plane or whatever, but I feel like he don't ever get a break, man. And I I feel like it's something weird when 
the simple fact that he's his face is a meme or whatever it just makes me feel like that people don't take men mental health seriously or whatever like especially going through what he just did like like being able, you you got to sit there with your wife while she admits pretty much um entitlement i know they had like an open marriage and stuff like that but at the same time if will ever did anything we know nothing about it period uh, like, okay I, I feel like it's two conversations there oh i'm sorry mm-hmm. go ahead faith go ahead we're out here having these broad sign these ndas that's why you're never here now uh- yeah, that's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she didn't get that at uh, NDA with Alcina, and I'm pretty sure they probably had conversations like. Uh, you said John Cena, Al- <laughs> uh, August, <laughs> August Alcina. Oh, oh, yeah. Damn, John Cena got that too. Nah, man, that just. <laughs> <laughs> John Cena. That would be terrible. Peacemaker? Oh, no, no, no. Da, 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 da. oh, quick side note, quick side note. I don't know if y'all heard, mm-hmm. but John Cena finally paid homage to Tony Yayo. He said he got his whole style from Tony Yayo. So. I'm glad he's uh, <laughs> finally admitting to his appropriation. Um, you said it before I could. <laughs> shit, man. Um, the Jada thing, man, uh, I'm going to go ahead and be jackass Tears again for the night. So I'm already on that mode, I guess. Um, it's two conversations. I definitely think there's a something to that people not taking men's mental health and, or men's abuse in relationships, whether it be emotional, verbal, or physical, seriously. But I think in this specific situation, I don't really see what the hell Jada said that was so crazy. If going by what you said, I haven't seen the clip, full disclosure. I Mm -hmm. haven't seen the clip. I haven't seen this video. I didn't know nothing about this. Um, But if she was just saying that when they were, if they talk about when they first got together, she's saying, yeah, I used to think that he should just read my mind. I think that that's a problem in most relationships in general when you start Mm -hmm. out. So that's just being honest. Like, I think men and women, when you first get with somebody, you especially if you've been by yourself or you've been with somebody else who knows you really well already, before mm. that, you get you take for granted the little things oh. that the people who have been around you for an extended period of time know about you that others don't. Like there's things about me that y'all get that it took me it took my wife a while to really understand and like get used to. Cause she mm-hmm. hadn't had the decade or so before that to get used to it like you know what i'm saying i think we forget that we grow to know people's quirks and likes dislikes pet peeves all that so i can see that that like i don't see the the part that puts will down in that particular comment now if there was more said that i'm missing because i haven't seen the clip or whatever the case may be then so be mm-hmm. it, but in this particular case, I don't really see what she said that was that outrageous in the context that you gave it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I put it, when I first saw it, when I first saw the clips or whatever, I was like, dang, again? Are you gonna, when are you gonna give this guy a break or whatever? But what what, this, what about that someone, made you say that? It just seems like every six months, Oh, like not every six months, I might be exaggerated, but every once in a while there's something where it's like I something between Jada and Will or whatever. And I know but what is there like between some... them? That's what I'm I think that's the context that I'm not grasping. Like okay, your like, reaction there, there's to it some... is not matching what I'm hearing from the context like you're giving. This... So I'm trying to see like what did she yeah. say that made yeah. it seem like she was yeah. disparaging him or dragging him through the mud again, or like they may be some yeah. friction between it, them. It seems where like did that come some, from? 
it's always some friction like ever since that whole alcina Why? thing like this always, where's the friction this, that's what i'm asking all right the it's just the past couple of instances now i would have to bring up um a few other times but it, it you're talking about right now yeah. like like you you're you're talking about oh. this never mind go ahead i'm sorry oh. never mind. don't worry about oh. it my bad oh. But I mean, it it's just, I don't know. It just seems like every time I hear or bring them up, there's always like some type of tension or um, just just in general, like um, every they either is bringing up old past tension or they're on the show saying something about it um, on the table talk show saying something about it. I just feel like, ah. Uh, yeah, like after that first instance with the entitlement, I'm like, um, can you give him some break to heal before you just start saying any old thing? Especially now where they take anything as far as your like media drops or whatever and run with it. And I, I don't know what it, Will has done behind closed doors, but that's the point. If he is hurt by what, it, she should stop. <clears throat> if 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 he is bothered by it or if it hurts him, she should uh, stop. He's he's had like he had it seemed like he had a he had an interview where he had um he was talking about he was contemplating suicide and everything or whatever. So like uh I, I know their whole thing is transparency and stuff like that, but I feel like the house need to heal before they can just come out there again after that first instance. Like, I, I'm like, after that first instance, and then me, myself, I know if I would put in that situation, like, look, we need to calm, we need to calm down with that for a good while. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Just saying anything out. Because evident, we got some issues or whatever. And I mean, the whole time when he went up there himself, he seemed like he didn't even really want to do this, but he felt like he had to do it to show face, like Will himself, like in general. So I don't know. I just feel like, like, geez, man, the guy doesn't really do anything wrong. Like, when's the last time you heard of anything Will Smith has done wrong, period? Like, just. He, he does amazing stuff. The only time I've heard a negative thing about Will is from his wife. Mm -hmm. And and that's I just don't I don't like you you you're way too open about <clears throat> your relationship to the public. I like I just feel like certain things you should you know keep to yourself. And 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 build with each other to yourself before. I mean, they might already did this. They might already did this, and that's why they she might feel comfortable just saying all these things out loud or whatever. But oh uh, man, he just I, I just feel like if if the roles would switch and Will would have came out of it, he would probably look horrible in that in that same situation. I, I just have, I feel like if the roles would switch, they would cancel the fuck out of Will Smith. They wouldn't. They can't wait to cancel Will Smith. There's probably still, you know, probably people waiting right now. Just like that's why they're blowing this up so they can figure out if it's some Will did that make her just keep coming out with the hey, we had this tension talk or whatever. But uh, that's the fuck I've been saying. <laughs> Would you say fake? This is like devil's advocate. That that could be her therapeutic way of working through working through her her shit. You can like you never mm -hmm. know what her therapist is where they may tell her to talk about it and then if she has a platform, she never she may be in the mindset of well, I'm a female. It may be other females who are, are feeling the same way, who have been through the same stuff and they don't know how to speak on it or they whatever, whatever. So she uses her platform to speak on it. Um, just me as being a married man, um, I feel like my wife would cover 
that type of shit that she gonna speak on in public with me first, you feel me, before she go on a public platform and discuss our personal business. Regardless of what type of relationship we have, open or not, I said like certain business, if you're gonna talk about it, you're gonna at least cover it with the other person. So as far as Will still is being hurt, um, I'm not gonna say they wouldn't be hurt by the business being brought up, but I'm gonna I don't say I'm gonna say they wouldn't be hurt as far as being dragged because he still would have some conscious thought of what she's gonna say and has already mm-hmm. processed. And so her bringing it up may bring up some past feelings, but if he's already processed them and gotten over it and is okay with her talking about it, it really ain't dragging them. It's just like, okay, I knew that shit. So if it hits a nerve, it hits a nerve. But Face. Um, <clears throat> what did she say or do in this situation that would cause say it hurt? Like I'm really confused, and I'm and you seem to have a grasp on it. No, Maybe you could break it down in a way that I understand. Happened. Like in this, I, I'm only talking it about this happened. situation, not the thing with the entanglement and all that. I'm talking about this particular situation. What is it that? is like she's talking about her thinking something so she's talking about her mistakes in thinking in a relationship she's not saying that he did anything wrong she didn't like what is it that like break down that mentality since you seem to get like both perspectives what is it that would make will even feel a type of way about this particular thing because okay if she's accounting for her mistakes, you feel me? Don't you think her mistakes would have affected him in some way? Because it's a mistake in a relationship. It ain't a personal mistake that she made on herself. So in some way, what she did with her mistake may have affected him. So her bringing that shit back up may be a trigger for him. We don't know. But if it's okay with her talking about it, he must have already processed it. You feel me? So to Pat, as far as what Pat's saying, he's speaking on it as far as we're not processing the shit. Her bringing up, regardless of anything relationship-wise, ain't good. You already brought up the entanglement shit. Then you brought up the, the sexual pleasing shit. Then you brought up the... What sexual pleasing? What? Them. What are you talking about? What sexual yeah, pleasing it, shit? She said, she said in the, that at first she... <laughs> He couldn't, he wasn't pleasing her sexually or whatever. This is and part of that same conversation. This is something different. Yes. This is yeah, part of the conversation com- that goes with um expecting him to know everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I got you. I understand now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Oh. Got it. That's why it's three of us. <laughs> it's me. I'm, I, it's me. I'm slow. It's me. That's why three of us. Totally man. me. Don't each other. They come all together. We get it right. Oh, mm. hey, whoever listens to this, um, I'm sorry, it's me. <laughs> My bad, I got it. Okay, Wait, we'll ask one more question. Can I ask Wait. one last? Can I ask one last question? Yeah, I'm gonna shut up. I'm, I'm gonna let y'all mm. go ahead and uh, rock out for a second. Um, mm. face that part about mm-hmm. uh, the not pleasing sexually. Was that said at all in this conversation before you just said that? <laughs> Did I miss that? To my Did knowledge, that... no. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Just uh, right on. Proceed. I just needed that for my own sanity. I, I was okay. <laughs> all right. I ain't wanted. I should have just said it or whatever. Bring it up. Try to be polite, Luke. but. 
Yeah. He Luffy. He Luffy right now, man. Shit. <laughs> Watch out for that tree. My road up the street. Mm. But that's my spot. I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's all I was saying. It just seemed like she just back to back. Just seemed like she back to back, just bringing stuff up over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Hope they get it together. Episode yeah. two. Any more fuckery? Nah, that was main. Fuck- it wasn't too much fuckery, man. The the main fuckery I saw was that that lady that dressed up like a dick and used her tit, tits as testicles pretty much but mm. that Mm-mm-mm. that and the jaded thing triggered me but yeah it's been pretty cool this week as far as that I haven't seen too much fuckery <laughs> so, I guess we're gonna move on to the next segment then Mm-hmm. And that will be face to screen. Yay! Faces. <laughs> yeah. Being that we're in the month of November, finally. Well, I can't say finally because this year I feel like it's flying in the hell back. But now we're in the month of November. This is true. We're going to focus on key black actors. And I'm going to go to their top five movies in my opinion. Once again, everything in face and screen is in my damn opinion. <laughs> like it or not. It's all face to screen, I guess. Damn mm-hmm. right. So like it or not, this week, we going to focus. Once again, we going to go with some Will Smith shit. We coming out of the negative oh, shit Lord, about man. the whatever. And we coming on with Will Smith's top five movies. In my damn opinion. Now, this is not in no specific order, specific order, I should say, but these are the top five movies. Now, the first one, Six Degrees of Separation. Whoa. Good acting that, job, man. Mm-hmm. Was he the one kissing a man in that movie? Yes. That's why I say good acting oh, okay. job. Great, great range. For him to have to be able to pull that off that early in his acting career. You feel me? It takes a lot of people years to be able to get that comfortable, like, okay, I'll do that. And he won't even make it that much money back then in movies. So, good movie for him. The plot, the movie itself, great, great movie. There's hey. some jokes there based off the last topic, but I'm going to digress. <laughs> yep. Yep. Leave it alone. But hey, next movie, Pursuit of Happiness, man. That was a good Every time I watch that movie, and when he come out that office, he get that big clap, and he happy because he know he got that damn job, I shed a little tear, man. That movie where hey, yeah, it's crying anyway, though, when that nigga locked in that damn mm-hmm. bathroom, pushing his, I mean, that closet, just, pushing his foot against that wall, boy, that's some. I was just saying that, man. I was just about to say that, bro. As a father, yeah. that's some, that's some yeah. tear jerking shit right there, boy. Because you just know indeed. that pain that he's going through. Yes, indeed. That's one of the greatest movies, period, to me. But as far as Will Smith, that's in his mm-hmm. top five. Next one, Enemy of the State. I like this movie. It had, a, it had a, 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 some good comedy parts in it that weren't supposed to be comical. But great movie, great performance of, on Will Smith's part. Um, overall, the movie itself, I... Yeah, it's been a little better, but the performance by Will Smith brought it home. I forgot all about that movie. Mm. Number four, I Am Legend. Majority yeah. of the movie is by damn self. So, I mean, hey, got to, got to be of a certain cowboy actor to pull that <laughs> shit off. You're a dog and some digital monsters. That is true. Hey. And it'll be entertaining enough for people to continue to sit there and watch the movie. And just you, a dog, and a few appearances by humans and flashbacks and shit. Don't yeah. worry. You'll be doing so good. Now, the last one of my top five for Will Smith 
is the movie Focus. Not Focus. a big one on a lot of people. Yeah, Focus. F O C U S. Yeah, like I said, a lot of people don't know about that movie. <laughs> Will Smith plays a con man in this movie. Um, falls mm-hmm. in love with some um con girl mm-hmm. intern of his. Ends up the whole movie is a, a I know twist and. Con- I saw. I remember the trailers now. I never saw the movie mm-hmm. though, but I, I think I'm okay. I'm I'm with you. Oh, no, it's a good movie. It's a good. It's a real good movie. I've watched the movie uh, uh, half a dozen times. So you gotta be somewhat good because I ain't gonna watch any goddamn thing. So yeah, yeah. Top five movies with Smith, man. He's done a lot of other stuff. People with names. Um, honorable mention. I say Shark Tale. His, his Shark Tales. <laughs> yeah. Shark Tale. When his animated debut. What? Yeah, yeah, he was on Shark Tales. Mm-hmm. What is what is he's okay? I don't know if I've seen that one yet. I'm sure my son. I'm sure seen you. It, oh, he, I'm sure you. He, he was in that movie Focus with the girl that played um Harley Quinn. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That well, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. He was in Suicide Squad. He was, he was in many, all the Men in Black. And he's been in a lot of great movies. But none of them bring the best out. Yeah, bad, the Bad Boy franchise. There are a lot of great movies. But his performances and none of those really touch the performances he gave in those top five movies to me. Um, Focus, that's a, that's, that's a toss up right there. Some other movies that probably could have slid in in that fifth spot. But. I don't know. It's something about that movie focus. He gave a little bit something in there that he don't give him no more other movies. Um, the comic, the the comical movies he puts out, the comedies, the little the the action comedy movies he puts out. When he got a good supporting cast, it is one thing. But when he can carry a movie by himself, that really shows his range. That really shows his capabilities of what he can do as far as the actor himself and entertainment. So those are my top five Will Smith movies. Um. You know, if you're out there listening, choose to watch one of them cool. Choose not to, hey, maybe your loss. <laughs> but, <laughs> a great book. Well, damn. And that's, and that's all I got on face the screen this week, baby. Right on. Uh, I would definitely my... put Hitch up there as one of my favorite Will Smith movies. It ain't necessarily... Yeah, it's his rom- rom-com debut. Yeah, it ain't no, I... no necessarily like Oh, he was an amazing actor in this, but mm. it's definitely entertaining to me for sure. Yeah, it's was right. She feels like he he doesn't fall. He he doesn't get typecast that much, man. He you got Ali in there too. A lot of people forget about him. Yeah, Ali. that I was about mm. to bring that up. Ali was dope. I like Ali. He he, he has a lot of range. You feel like um, Independence Day, I Robot, Seven Pounds. Uh, it's it's yep. a lot of great movies Will Smith played in, especially in his later career. His early career, he focused on the action movies and the big blockbusters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But if people were really key in and hone in on his later material, they'll see a lot more, a lot of different stuff from his acting ability. So, I mean, really, really concussion like won't that bad. His accent yeah. won't great, but the movie itself won't that bad. And he like, got a new movie coming out. So. Oh yeah, he might not have an accent. King Richard, his ability is in the range, man. Yeah, one time coming up, he's gonna be snowed in, man. Check out the Will Smith movies, man, and not the normal everyday ones. Everybody talks about Independence Day, Man in Black. Check out some of his other movies, man. If you on Netflix, type in Will Smith, should have come up. Amazon Prime, type in Will Smith, should have come up. You know, just go through a discography. Discography. You know, he got that new movie coming out, King Richard, when he's um Selena yep. Venus Williams' father. Mm-hmm. Now, I do want to see that. I'm definitely yeah. interested to see like their story because I don't know. I know like they grew up in the hood or whatever, but I don't know a lot about their actual like journey and all that. So that should be yeah. good. I'm the very interested. Be, I don't never see him being like a Nicolas Cage and taking every movie that's brought to him. Because- like, yeah, he don't, don't need see. the money like Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage being yeah. tax trouble. Yeah, I don't know like what's up with Nicholas Cage, man. Yeah. That nigga, yeah. Nicholas yeah. Cage, crazy. Do not put his name in on shit because you'll find a plethora of bullshit movies. Like, my God, 
My God. Crazy yeah. movies yes. and weird Asian commercials. Y'all seen um yeah. y'all seen uh like the scenes where he's like he tried to make his own Superman movie? Yep. Mm-hmm. It's disturbing. It is. It is. It is disturbing. You know, Nicholas Cage is a good actor, but he acts in too much shit. He don't have no range, though. Like you was talking about Will Smith range. He's Nicholas Cage mm-hmm. has to play Nicholas Cage. Like you have to write parts for or him. Or Nicholas. You, you he ain't gonna be able to pull off somebody else. He ain't one of them. Hello? Like. And I personally prefer those type of actors that can like I can make you anywhere, anybody. Like uh brother that passed, um Black Panther. Uh oh, Chadwick. Yeah. Chadwick. Okay, what you ask him to be? I need you to be a white man from Mars. All right, I got it. I thought you were talking about um Omar like, from the Oz, um, Michael. Um Omar. Uh, the dude that played Omar. Oh, from, oh Michael um, uh, Carter. Yeah. No, he's pretty much himself in there. He's pretty much the same. He's pretty much Omar in every movie. It's just whether or not he's Never, gay or uh, not, or whether he's a dad or a drug dealer, but he always the same mm-hmm. kind of tough, yeah. no nonsense yeah. type nigga. So, but like Nicolas Cage is always the same. He, he don't got no, he don't change up the voice to act. It's just, nope. He's Same like, type he's of like, character. He like great value Keanu Reeves. Like, yeah, he's a, he plays good every man in movies where it doesn't have to be character driven. It's more you need a empty shell for the audience to dump themselves into. He's like the Sandman of action. <laughs> like the wrestler Sandman. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not following that, that analogy, sir. Exactly what you just explained. He's just an empty shell. He needs something for the fans to get behind. And every time something went down, whatever you do, you bring the fan man out of what happened. The fans jump behind his antics, drinking the beer, slapping it with the cane. You feel me? Or God's way you put him at, he was the same fan man. <laughs> I, I can't that. roll with that <laughs> though, bro. The Sandman. Well, I, Sandman was actor. the original Stone Cold, man. Yeah, so was Nicholas Cage. Sandman got more range than Nicholas Cage, man. Have you seen that movie Nick. where that nigga got on the suit and they he got like it's like bees and shit? Oh. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it's like the weirdest fucking movie. Nicholas Cage. Is it Nicholas Cage movie? Oh, man. Don't do Sam and the. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a weird one. He's like, it's like a cult or something, and it's bees everywhere and shit. (laughs) It's a remake of an old movie, but I don't know the old movie. The Thor's place with the horror animal. Who? The stuff animal. I say he got a new horror movie he put out. Like this year, last year, some shit, and they trapped in like a little um, him and some other people were trapped in like some little story facility or some carnival shit that's possessed. But he a psycho, so I don't. Know. You feel me? <laughs> and if he don't take that straight this, to DVD bullshit, look this this the type of this the type of movie that <laughs> oh, Nicholas Cage is coming out with in in twenty twenty one. Nicholas Cage, <laughs> he has this movie called Pig. And the synopsis of the movie is living alone in the Oregon wilderness, a truffle hunter returns to Portland to find the person who stole his beloved pig. Yo, I heard about that. It's like a um key, it's like a what's the movie? John Wick. But oh no, but with a pig. No. It's the, no. it's like the same type of thing. I just I just I don't know how the hell we got to this conversation, no. but I literally no. just read about this movie like two days within the past two days. It's like a John Wick, but about they stole his pig instead of the cat or the dog or whatever the shit was in John Wick. I ain't gonna no, fight y'all. I, I've, I've seen a couple of the fighting scenes from John Wick, but I ain't never seen the movie, so I don't know what the hell. 
They asked I, me to refer to um, I just level. got into it myself. Uh, my brother let me like watch all three of them. They're good. They're good action. I they're heard they're good action movies. movies, but I heard you don't really need to understand the plot to like the movie. So mm-hmm. I've just seen a couple of the fighting scenes. I ain't never really invested in actually watching the movie. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm good. You, you, you want, you know, good action. I'm an action junkie when it comes to movies. So if you just want to watch a good action movie from time, John Wick is, is pretty good. It's one of those things where it's like, um, there's an underlying, there's an underlying plot in the background. Like, um, but, they stole really his cat or something, ain't it? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. but how do you say it's like... Oh, it's dog. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They stole his car. It's, you took my it's like you, You're more trying to figure out who these people are that John Wick is going against and what is this secret world that he lives in pretty much the whole time. So it it gets you more intriguing to that, trying to figure out what this this secret world he lives in and like who is this society and wh- who runs what pretty much and who's really in control when you're watching it. Um, and that, I would say that's pretty much majority of the plot. But the action keeps you along while you try to, you know, in the background of your head, trying to figure out what's going on in the movie. Gotcha. Or, it's like it's like I don't know. I don't want to say it's the Matrix, but or whatever. Like as far as action wise, you know how the the Matrix is it's mostly action, but there's there's still like an underlying background theme in the background or whatever. Like there's still like a concept and there's still like, but you're more like looking at the action. Like to me, I feel like the Matrix is a more action oriented movie. Um, what if, when I watch it, but what it's, if, it's like that, but with assassins. Pretty much. Mm, but what you say? Blow your mind. I'm gonna blow your mind real quick. Both mm-hmm. the movies supposed to come out around the same time, right? Pig. The new John Wick and the new Matrix supposed to come out around the same time, right? I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know there was a new John Wick coming out. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's another one coming out. So, what if? They both coming out for at the same time for a reason. What if the John Wick come out first, and then the next day the um, Matrix come out? But then the both movies reveal that in the Matrix, Neo is John Wick. <laughs> I think it would, that might just take a. They would really have to do that right. Like they would have to be the most, the greatest. They probably had to get Kevin Feige on it. Like they would have to do that completely. Why would Neo be John Wick? You'd have to have a compelling ass story reason for it to happen. For I feel like for the fandoms to not go completely ape shit. I I could say I I could see how you could. Tend like I mean, right, fighting so, wise, I I can see it. It's just narratively, I don't really see the connections. But I haven't seen John Wick, so it may be some shit in there that's like, oh, this is like the Matrix. So I don't know. Is it's like um, the only way I could see that tying in is like the way they had to calm down John Wick from screwing up the system they already built with the assassins and everything. Mm-hmm. It is like they put them in some kind of coma, give them like the pill from the Matrix, and and then we we find out that Neo's past life, he was an assassin, and then the assassin mm-hmm. was John Wick. Like that's the only way I could see it. But the way these new trailers is going at it with the Matrix, it seems like he just had a regular job. And then he just have headaches from his previous life outside of the Matrix, something like that. Mm-hmm. And the blue pill, I think they're going on like a big pharma type thing. Like the blue pill is used so people won't, won't know the truth or whatever. And if you take the red pill, then you 
figure out the truth, whatever. I ain't but, seen no uh, trailer for that movie, so I don't know about that either. It, the trailer's pretty dope. Like I, I you Ooh, know, what purple saying? pill. The Samuel Jackson pill. I don't yeah, like the pills. Yeah. I gotta. I don't like the pills. I gotta take now. I ain't trying to take no more pills. Yeah, my lightsaber, my own color. I want take me I want a black couple of pills for this like damn pain video. in my arm. You said what video game? They got a black lifesaver on the video game. I want that. Mm. I like that. I'm going to take me. I'm going to take me some pills for this arm. God dang. Well, I thought you was about to say a whole different thing. I'm glad I didn't. I was like, yeah. Whatever you thought. Sandwich. They ain't got nothing to do with us, champ. No, 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 no. Go Blue Chew. Bluechew.com. Go get no, you I'm some. I'm talking about pain. I am talking about pain. Yes, I know that after you finish your sentence, but in the middle of your sentence, I my brain was <laughs> definitely taking it a whole different way. Yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Well, um, We've made our way here to talking about Bluetooth, so I think that's a good place to end it. Um, <laughs> make sure y'all go out and watch your Will Smith movies and face the screen. Um, yeah. Again, sorry for my behavior this evening. Uh, my bad. Um, I can almost guarantee it's going to be a few people out there that had the same experience I had, though. So to so you guys... <laughs> <sighs> but um it's been a night <laughs> uh, yeah do we got a black business well we can mm. shout out to all the, the, the businesses we had before uh yeah pretty much um, marley's malls uh vip imagery for photography if y'all got like yeah, weddings and stuff we got them out there for that uh Oh, oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk on the face. Go ahead. Tell them about the merch. You know, get fresh, man. Get nice for the winter. Get your nice hoodie. Get your nice hat. Hey, we even got pants. Get you some nice shit. <laughs> we even got pants. Get you fifteen percent off when you use promo code Pod Squad Eight Three. That's Pod Squad Eight Three. All caps now. All caps now. All caps. I hope you're listening. Pod Squad 83. Artrayclothing.com. Once again, say it with me now. Artrayclothing.com. Now that's one black business. You better say Clothing.com. Let's get it. You see it. Now support it. Um, If you want to support in another way, you know, feel free to go ahead and donate. Uh, we do take cash app donations, dollar sign, podnatiz, one, P-O-D-N-A-T-I-Z, one. Uh, we also do take donations on buymeacoffee.com for as little as one dollar. Um, you can also sign up for a subscription on our Anchor platform um, if you are a avid fan of our audio podcast. Um, if you are a YouTube subscriber who wants to get a more immersive video experience and also get the behind the scenes perks videos that only the pod squad gets to see um sign up for a membership on buy me a coffee for $4.99 um that's buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners um or subscribing um on our anchor page at anchor.fm backslash the pot um but yeah man uh if they want if you want to get in touch with us feel free to do so and pat how can they do that at T H E P O D N A S. Uh, that's at T at sign T H E P O D N A S. That's um, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, it's Facebook. Also on Facebook, let's Tiz Face Pat are the partners. And, key, uh, yep. key, key, key. And if you don't remember all that, then just remember our name.com, the partners.com, T H E P O D N A S.com for everything. 
donation information, merch information, all of our social media, all of our video and audio platforms, all of the live stuff, all of the everything, right there, one-stop shop, thepartners.com. Um, and yeah, man, uh, episode 50. It's 50 of them things. We halfway to 100. And uh, this has been episode 50. As always, I have been one third of the partners. It's your boy Tiggs, and I've been along with. It's the Padawan here, man. Sorry for being loopy. I got back. And I'm along with. <laughs> Dramatic pause. You know, you know, you know, it's space in the place. I just hop back in the race, catching up with everybody else. Hey, thank y'all for coming. You could have been anywhere else, but you decided to come here and stick through the whole episode to be with the hit is. Hope to see you next week. Indeed, man, indeed. Let us know what you thought by leaving a voice message on Anchor or a comment below. Join the conversation. Join the conversations. Any of the conversations, if you had a thought about it, if something resonated with you, if you had something that you were thinking while we were talking, please let us hear it. Share the conversation. Leave a comment below on YouTube or leave us a voice message here on Anchor. Um, as always, we love y'all. Um, and we about this thing. Episode 50 in the can. Yeah.